It is one of the deadliest bombings in the Afghan capital in years. A very powerful truck bomb exploded at the height of morning rush hour in one of the most secure areas of Kabul. At least 80 people are dead. Hundreds are wounded. This attack had happened in a heavily protected area, an area near foreign embassies, government institutions, as well as several news outlets. A driver working for the BBC is among the dead. Now, next, I want to bring in Captain Bill Salvin, who joins us live from Kabul. He is a U.S. military spokesman in Afghanistan. He joins us now live on the line from Kabul. And Captain, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I understand that you have some details on how this attack unfolded and also how Afghan forces played a role in preventing the attacker from entering the green zone. Please tell us what happened. Well, Christy, about 8.20 this morning, a truck bomb detonated outside of the green zone, but near diplomatic uh, facilities that were inside the green zone. Uh, the checkpoints that the uh, Afghan police man around the green zone uh, is very robust, and those checkpoints uh, prevented that truck from being able to get into the green zone and do even more damage. And most importantly, this is a very tragic day for the people of Afghanistan and the people of Kabul, who once again are, are mourning the loss of loved ones today. Absolutely. This is a horrific act of violence happening during the holy month of Ramadan, no less. What is the mood among Afghan security forces right now? Are emotions running high? Are there fears of a follow-up attack, especially during Ramadan? Well, I, I was just out at the uh, scene about an, an hour and a half ago, and uh, what I saw was uh, some very determined, uh, resolute uh, uh, Afghan policemen who were uh, working to uh, keep the area clear so that uh, construction workers and other first responders could clear the area. Uh, I did not get a sense of, uh, of fear. What I got is a sense of determination uh, and a sense to uh, do everything that they could to uh, get this area back to normal as soon as possible. And who is behind this brutal attack? Again, 80 people killed, 300 wounded. Was this the work of ISIS? Was this the work of the Taliban? We have not seen a clear uh, claim of responsibility uh, for this attack, so it, it's very hard to say who's uh, behind this attack. One of the things that is important to realize about these types of attack is they tend to be signs uh, of weakness. Uh, forces that are not winning on the battlefield can very easily build a, a vehicle-borne uh, improvised explosive device and, and drive it into uh, the center of, of a city, unfortunately. And it shows the barbaric nature of the enemy that the people of Afghanistan are facing. Yeah, very barbaric, because what happened today is just a heartbreaking reminder of the toll that the people, the, the innocent civilians of Afghanistan must continue to deal with. What is your assessment of the overall security situation now in Afghanistan? Is it getting worse? We think that the, the security situation uh, is... Uh, Today's attack, uh, obviously, is, is a very dramatic example of what terrorists can do when they are determined uh, to cause death and suffering among innocent civilians. But the security situation is being stabilized by the uh, ever-growing capability of the Afghan police force and the Afghan National Army. Uh, and I can tell you that the uh, Resolute Support mission stands uh, firm in our commitment to assist our Afghan partners as they professionalize their force and work to secure their country. And tell us more about that commitment. I know you can't disclose sensitive information about Resolute Support and your mission there in Afghanistan, let alone possible future troop deployments that's being weighed by the Pentagon. But what can you tell us about how your organization is working up to sharp security for the people of Afghanistan. The, the most important uh, focus for us this year is to work on building offensive capability with the Afghan National Army and the Afghan Air Force. And we are uh, training their special forces and training their pilots in order for them to uh, have extra offensive punch on the battlefield uh, that will provide uh, them capability that the insurgents simply can't match. And that is our focus for 2017, is working on building that offensive capability with with the Special Forces and the Afghan Air Force.